two female Scandinavian tourists were brutally murdered while hiking in Morocco's Atlas Mountains. 24-year-old Dane Louise of Esteraga Jeppesen and 28-year-old Norwegian Maren Euland were stabbed to death by suspected Islamic jihadists. And a horrific video shows Jeppesen being beheaded. Although the attack was likely sexually motivated, the killers later claimed allegiance to ISIS. And guess what one of the victims had previously posted on her Facebook page. A video showing a bearded Muslim man alongside the words, never judge people by their appearance. The video, a short film entitled Think For Yourself, shows a white woman looking at a bag carrying Muslim with suspicion. Plainclothed police officers then run out of the car towards the Muslim. Then they run straight past him and instead tackle a well-dressed white man with a briefcase before finding a bag full of drugs. The Muslim man then meets his family and the white woman realise what an Islamophobe she was. Never judge people by their appearance, the young blonde Scandinavian girl wrote on her Facebook before travelling to Morocco where she was decapitated. This is what the three men who did it looked like. Some people even reported that the mother of one of the victims in Morocco was posting love heart emojis aimed at Moroccans on Facebook just days after her daughter was brutally slaughtered. Swedish news outlets later reported that the rape and beheading carried out by supporters of Islamic State had nothing to do with Islam. And so we observe yet another tragic case of cultural relativism. The idea that a person's beliefs, values and practices should be understood based on that person's own culture rather than be judged against the criteria of another. How many times have we seen ardent progressives visit shithole countries proclaiming love and peace to be universal only for them to end up dead? Pippa Bacca, the performance artist who said she would hitchhike from Italy to the Middle East to quote, send a message of peace and marriage between different peoples and nations. Her sister said she thought that in the world there were more positive than negative people and that it was right to be trusting. When she got to Turkey, what happened to her? Raped and strangled to death. When news of her murder broke, authorities and the media were keen to downplay any connection to Turkey or any connection to the killer's belief system. Amanda Kajira, the liberal activist who traveled to Haiti to raise awareness about violence against women. She said she was, quote, committed to preserving the dignity of black men in a world which constantly stereotypes them as violent savages. What happened to her? Held on a roof top and repeatedly raped by a black man. When she wrote about the experience after, guess who Amanda said was to blame? White men. Ellen Krantz, a Swedish supporter of multiculturalism and a strong advocate of mass immigration. She was a member of a Facebook page called we like diversity. What happened to her? Raped and killed by an Ethiopian immigrant and dumped in a forest. Zayda Catalan, the Swedish Green Party politician who was a staunch advocate for open borders before visiting the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What happened to her? Beheaded and thrown in a shallow grave. 20-year-old Ellie Warren, a left-wing environmentalist who visited Mozambique for the diving and for the, quote, pumping nightlife. According to her mother, she was, quote, just one of those girls that wanted to travel the world and see everything she could before she was 30. Warren had an insatiable desire to, quote, help others less fortunate than herself. What happened to her? Raped? murdered and dumped in a toilet block. American Lauren M, working as an au pair in Austria, responded to a campaign encouraging people to take refugees and migrants into their own homes. She took in a Gambian migrant who had escaped from a local refugee center to escape deportation and had a warrant out for his arrest. Lauren gave the migrant a home despite him being previously accused of sexually assaulting a minor. What happened to her? Raped and suffocated to death. Belgian psychologist Malay's Dairymaker worked with failed asylum seekers in Sweden to prevent their deportation. What happened to her? Mowed down by a truck driven by a failed asylum seeker. A female interpreter working on a documentary about the plight of vulnerable refugees. What happened to her? Raped by refugees. These cases are commonplace with NGOs and charities routinely covering them up so as not to stigmatize migrants. And then there was the left-wing couple who cycled through the Middle East and the Balkans. This is what they wrote before embarking on their journey. You read the papers and you're led to believe that the world is a big scary place. People, the narrative goes, are not to be trusted. People are bad, people are evil. I don't buy it. Evil is a make-believe concept we've invented to deal with the complexities of fellow humans holding values and beliefs and perspectives different than our own. By and large, humans are kind, generous and wonderful and kind. No greater revelation has come from our journey than this. 
What happened to them? Ran over and stabbed to death by ISIS. Let's explore this case a bit more. Because despite what they said, I read their other travel blogs. And in almost every non-European country they visited, they were stalked harassed and threatened with physical harm. In Morocco, they were followed by weirdos trying to sell them drugs. Called racist for not buying something from a street vendor, pushed off their bikes for refusing to take photos with people, and in one case, the guy was almost squished up against another car while trying to cross the road. The couple were tragically murdered in Tajikistan by Islamic State terrorists as part of a vehicle attack on seven Western tourists cycling through the Pamir Mountains. The murderers even made an ISIS propaganda tape before the slaughter. So yes, evil does exist, and there are evil people in the world. And some countries are more dangerous than others because some cultures and some belief systems are worse than others. Our negative view of some other cultures isn't just a product of our own ignorance and bigotry. It's a fair appraisal of what happens in those countries due to the attitudes of the people who live there. Does that mean that everyone in Morocco or Tajikistan is out to harass, attack or murder Western tourists? No, of course not. But that's not the issue. The issue is that leftists have embraced moral and cultural relativism. They've projected their own self-delusion that the world can be a utopia if we just all collectively believe it to be that way. No, the world doesn't work like that. There are bad people in the world, evil exists in the world, and no amount of wishy-washy, hashtag love wins speciousness is ever going to change that fact. This, this, this is a harmonious beat. This, this, this is a homage beat.